start. Okay. Hi, welcome all. Um, my name is Praminda Sethi. I'm one of the trustees, board member, and a co-chair of the DC chapter of Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. Um, welcome again. Um, we, uh, Punjabi Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization that started here in New York, New Jersey area a couple of years ago, 2017 to be precise. We are a strictly nonpartisan, non-political, non-religious entity. We really just uh, wanted to create a chamber of commerce, community, um, and uh, culture. Mm -hmm. And what we have realized is that there is um, uh, there's, there's a lot of diaspora on the globe uh, wants to connect and help each other out. I'm sure uh, many of you have experienced Punjabis, and and you yourselves are. So if you ask a Punjabi for help, they're going to help you, uh, and that's who we are. Uh, we come from various backgrounds. Um, uh, and, and, and everybody, uh, primarily from uh, Indian Punjabi uh, uh, backgrounds, and, and we are right now, Punjabi Chamber of Commerce is spread out uh, around the globe. We have chapters in um, all over North America, uh, in, in Toronto, in Vancouver, in San Francisco, Washington, New York, New Jersey, to London, to uh, now we just opened the latest one. Um, in Sydney and all over India. So we are excited to be part of this movement and we wanted to share the love with the community. A little bit about myself, I don't really like talking about me and I won't take a lot of time, but basically I'm a founder of a technology company. Uh, we've been thinking about how to spread the love. Everybody has their own passion. We are very passionate technologists um, and uh, we figured that we will start uh, an emerging technology series, and there is a lot of talent in, in Punjabi diaspora around the globe. And hopefully with my, with my partners here, Ravish and Dr. Jindal, uh, we'll be bringing in uh, talent from around the globe to speak about really exciting and um, emerging uh, technologies that are impacting our lives and our businesses. That said, I will transfer it over to, to Ravish and he can talk about um, the emerging tech series that we are starting on right now. One thing I would uh, encourage everybody to think about and hold back their questions, but write them down in our QA section and we'll leave about five to 10 minutes in the end uh, to try to have a conversation with myself, Ravish and Dr. Jindal and address them. Thank you and welcome. Ravish. Thank you very much, uh, Praminder. And, um... Uh, very good morning, good evening, or uh, from wherever you are joining. Um, again, thank you very much. I am one of the co-chairs of uh, DC chapter as well, and uh, immense pleasure to hold this session. And we are looking forward for a number of these sessions um, as we move, um, you know, to some of our uh, emerging tech series. Um, I am Ravish Devan, um, again leading a, a tech company, and um, you know, here to share some experiences. This is a very interesting age that we are in right now. Um, you know, just like you know, you you read about industrial revolution back when. This age is tech revolution, um, and if you look at, look around last few years, there have been so much change in how we deal with each other, how we talk to each other. You know, technology has been just um, you know center of making all those changes. Uh, you are looking at you know AI, ML, you know. Uh, catching you by, uh, you know, surprise in your daily lives. Um, there is IoT all over the place, blockchain, I'm sure, um, you know, there's no short of news on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So there is, there is just a lot going on across the industries, you know, virtual reality, especially in the emerging tech. And this is very exciting times to be in technology, um, you know, from our standpoint. So, uh, we are really looking forward for this these emerging tech um, you know sessions to bring you awareness around these new technologies and to really share um, you know experiences with you what we are seeing in the industry as well and we will be inviting you know technologies across, across the globe to share their experiences and and share what they're doing and share how it can help um, you know community to to grow um, I just want to bring up a very quick example um, you know AI and ML, you know, for those who know the technology is one thing, but for those who don't know is a whole different thing. And they don't even realize they are using this every you know, day. 
and you know i'll just pick a simple example if you have an iphone or android you might have seen those messages pop up you know 5 minutes to you know your this address uh, it's basically by virtue of of uh, ml um, you know it learns about where you are going from to uh, every day where is your workplace where do you live very interesting very simple uh, mechanism to to capture um, your daily routine right that's that's the you know ml piece that you're looking at machine learning piece that you're looking at machine learns over time what the day with the data that you give it to uh, to the machine so we have today dr manish jindal um uh, he is uh, i let him introduce himself but he is he is uh, you know uh, he was gracious enough to accept our request to join and talk about um you know uh, his uh, knowledge uh, around ai and ml so manish uh, thank you very much for joining and over to you oh that's so kind of you thank you so much uh, namaste from india and a uh, very warm good morning to you on a weekend that's great so i'm indeed grateful to punjabi chamber of commerce for being so thoughtful enough to consider me part of uh, this program the talk series on emerging technologies and heartfelt gratitude to mr praminder sethi as well as, uh, as mr ravish tiwan for being there for uh, inviting me and making part of this program and i'm proud to say that i'm part of punjabi chamber of commerce as well so indeed great and thank you and as well as thanks to genia as well for being at the back end support so this is what we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and robotics adding new dimension to life with futuristic approach we will i we are the pioneers of e mobility in india we brought hoverboards autobots mobility robots as well as electric scooters way back in 2015 we had a very humble start and uh, now we are number one in india in our domain and featured among top 5 in the world and this was with the idea to provide a sustainable holistic environment to my fellow citizens and same way now we are operational in 65 countries with our another company mentrex whereby the vision is to educate to empower to elevate again uh, making people as uh, mr ravish he was explaining so nicely that uh, the people who know ai ml that's great but there's so many people who aren't even aware but they're using these technologies so making them aware as well as bringing in innovation creation production disruption this is the vision towards this so let me begin with and try to pep you up this morning with the wonderful video that you might love this is what is your near future looks like i hope my screen is visible to all of you at the peak of the party the fly is morning back to the future to fast to be tardy my lady flies barbie straight fixing never tripping on my addiction now we picking up steam yeah got the lights on green and then we change gears for the scene cuz the team and I'm reaching top speed throwing hooks like I'm crazy never late to the party so on your screens you are seeing a man flying this is what we are working upon up making a flying of a boat this is a real life video you're seeing it's not a concept one and we are already working on it this pandemic stay away from each other so that's on the ground how about making you fly but it could be possible when things settle down and punjabi chamber of commerce pcc invites us for a real life talk series or a session we might be landing like this each one flying and going there and attending the session and this is how we are going to make you fly in the coming near future so what is happening now ai robotics is coming from virtual to the real world and we all are using in a day to day life and ai help is helping it big time in personality development as well how about if i let you know that artificial intelligence can let you know what kind of person you are just with your eye movement just with your retina scan the way you move your eyes it can let you know what kind of personality traits you hold yes that's the power of technology that's the algorithms behind it and ai is helping big time in uh, personality checking right now on your screens you're seeing a robot and a young kid they are doing identical things and you might be feeling the young kid is 
copying the robot, but it's the other way around. The robot is making the gestures of this young lad. Yes. Now the technologies have surpassed to such levels that these robots, they can mimic our gestures. They can even mimic our emotions. They can mimic human brains. That is what you're going to see soon. And that is why we need to bring technology, know-how technology, knowledge technology, education at the grassroots level. And we should be thankful to PCC for uh, making this talk series happen on emerging technologies, making all of us aware about it. So here you can see educators, parents, kids, all together getting the know-how of the technologies. AI is capable of reading our body reflexes as well. Imagine in your room, a camera, you wake up, you get up from the bed, you move, you walk, you exercise. The camera taking note of all your activities and it is letting you know which area of your body is strong enough, which area of your body is lacking or where you need improvements or what ailments you can face in future. Yes, just a simple camera with AI engine can let you know this. That is how AI is reading all your body reflexes and can help towards much better, you know, a stronger body and health. AI algorithms can accurately determine personality traits. We all love clicking selfies. Mm, maybe girls love it more. How about if I let you know there is a wonderful career waiting for you ahead just by clicking selfies? Yes, AI just through the selfies, it runs its own algorithms. It can let, let you know the kind of personality traits, the kind of person you are, the kind of career uh, uh, that would suit you and the kind of person you would shape up in the future. Isn't that interesting? AI is big time changing the world. It is bringing a paradigm shift how marketing is happening. Earlier, they could, we used to see the advertisements. Now you see how influencers are influencing the Instagram, or Facebook or YouTube, so much is happening in that domain. And that is how IBM recently developed Watson that can visualize your personality data as well as it has answers to everything. I came across IBM Watson last year. Uh, it's a virtual engine, yeah, but you can talk to it, you can communicate with it, it can speak any language and it has answers to anything that you ask. That is how we are entering into the free world of mind, matter, and computer intelligence, whereby we would be working hand in hand with technology, hand in hand with robots. So here, you know, so many people, when we talk about artificial intelligence, when we talk about, uh, you know, technologies, when we talk about robotics, they feel it would, that it could be humans versus technology, humans against technology. But believe me, it's humans with technologies. That is what you're going to see during this talk. And if I tell you, there are 52 million opportunities. Yes, 52 million opportunities waiting alone in the domain of AI. All we need to do is prioritize our own development. So when we talk about AI, it's very intriguing, very fascinating. And mostly... It sounds like a subject of Hollywood movie, a science fiction movie. And that is how I got, uh, you know, inclined towards technology. I am a commerce graduate, but I make robots. And how that happened that since my childhood, whenever a science fiction movie Hollywood used to get released, I used to rush to theater. And since childhood, I was very inclined towards it. But what exactly AI is? Is it an intelligence or is it a technology or is it something we need to study? If I put it all together, AI is intelligence, technology, study all together. And what we need to do, I'm going to quickly showcase you the perspective of world leaders. Today, someone asked me that how world leaders are carrying technologies. They feel that with AI, with ML, anything and everything is possible here. Mr. Bill Gates on screen, we all know him. He he's believes that Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, all are using AI and it's very exciting and it can help us solve the problems and it can substitute the arenas where we human beings cannot approach or our powers, are, our capabilities are limited. AI can help us big time. Here is Mr. Tim Cook. He also proponents the same. And same is the former president, Mr. Barack Obama, as well as... Uh, Mr. Berkshire from Hartway. So what exactly is artificial intelligence? We humans, we are naturally intelligent, right? We have our natural intelligence, but when we create something intelligent, that is called artificial intelligence, more like solving an intelligence. So once we solve an intelligence, what to do with it? Use it to solve everything else. Yes, it is like creating smart machines 
to create smarter machines, to solve an intelligence, to make solve everything else, to solve the problems around whatever problems we are facing or uh, whatever, how we can make lives much better. On your screens, you're seeing the BMW manufacturing unit. How cars were made earlier? On the assembly line, we used to see so much of workforce. They used to assemble the entire car, whether it's the engines, transmission lines, windshields, seats, what do we talk about? But now what is happening? It is made by smart robots equipped with AI engines. Here on your screen, you're seeing BMW engineers, they are collecting pictures of the cars from various angles, from all the different angles, the car model, the car series, the car number, they're clicking each and everything. Why? They're feeding it to the system so that systems can recognize which particular car series is it. And then what happens here on the, you see the BMW engineer, he is uh, you know, putting up the car series number on the car so that the cameras, they can equip with AI engines can recognize which car model it is. Then what happens? These cars are being sent to the assembly line whereby the smart robots, they assemble the entire car without any human intervention. They are even capable of measuring the thickness of the paint. BMW has a standard of seven layers of paint. And these robots are even capable of measuring those seven layers. And if there are any deviations, they can communicate with each other. Like us humans, we talk to each other. These machines can talk to each other. They communicate the insights. If any deviations, they do take the corrective measures. These machines, they know how much inventory they have used, how much inventory is there in the warehouse, how much more inventory they need to order, and they make the entire car with it talk about the seats, the engine, the transmission, the windshield, the seat beds, anything and everything in the car. And those are the much smarter cars that these machines are making. This is how AI is making things happen. And we all are using these cars. So we don't even know that these cars are being made by these KUKA robots from Japan. And why we are talking so much about technology? Why this talk series came into existence? Well, because it is the need of the hour. And what we need to do, we need to bring educators, we need to bring the trainers, mentors, industry leaders all together on one platform. We need to engage them for the better future and for the betterment of the youth. And what we need to do for that, we need to spread awareness. Whenever something wonderful or something as powerful as technology we have in our hand, we need to make sure that we're deploying it successfully, ethically, and knowledgeably. Ethically is being the most important part. We all do right things when people are watching us, when the people are supervising us. But ethically is we need to do right when no one is watching. We need to deploy these technologies in the most ethical manner. And what we need to do, understand human intelligence. It's us humans who are making these technologies happen. So what we need to do, we need to prioritize our own development. We need to learn to learn. We need to continue to learn. We need to earn, learn to learn. We need to forego the old standards. We need to adopt the new norms. That is why when I said that it is always humans with robots, always humans with technology cause, what we need to do is we need to prioritize, keep on learning. We need to surpass our learning. We need to develop ourselves so that we are able to develop new technologies and we are able to work hand in hand with these robots. And we have to tackle the educational intelligence as Mr. Ravish Devon was saying, it's all about big data, artificial intelligence, ML, machine learning, internet of things, cryptos, augmented reality, virtual reality. We have to bring them all together in the one sphere and make it happen. This is the all together the curriculum of AI, machine learning. When machines are fed with the data, they learn from their own environment. And it could be unsupervised where no human being is required. They supervise when a human intervention is required in deep learning. When a uh, human being goes for a PhD or a doctorate, they are termed as a research scholars because they study a one particular subject deeply. So same is true when a particular engine, particular artificial intelligence algorithm, they go, they are fed with the, the data from one stream into, they go into deep learning. They learn from their own environment and they deliver uh, the desired results and they improve over time. NLP, natural language processing. And then these machines, they are able to process our own natural language. What is Alexa? An ordinary speaker. 
a speaker that has been into existence since ages in our transistors, in our radios, in our stereo systems. But now what is happening? We're talking to Alexa. Hey Alexa, how are you? How's the weather? Can you read out latest news for me? Can you play my favorite music? How is it happening? When we're talking to Alexa, Alexa is doing the content extraction. It classifies it, that what domain it is. Then it translates it into its own machine language. It does the question answers, generates the desired outcome that we are looking for. So that is an ordinary speaker. When I cook with the AI engine, it can do much more. And then comes the vision, image recognition or uh, uh, machine vision. The perfect example is Facebook. It can recognize our images and more is going to unfold during the session. And then speech to text, text to speech. We all use WhatsApp, various other means of texting. Certain times we are driving. We are not able to type in our text. I don't know how many of you know, but in WhatsApp, there is a feature that we can speak to WhatsApp and WhatsApp will type it out. And the other way around, if we are not able to read our text, it can speak out the text to us. Here on your screens, you're seeing a few of my students. They're from grade five, six, and seven. Why I'm showcasing this is that I'm guiding them and mentoring them. And they have recently won a national prize in India. And now they're going to Russia at the call of Russian government on all sponsored trip to guide Russians. So if these kids of fifth, sixth, and seventh grade can do it, anyone can do it. All you need is a bigger thinking, wonderful imagination, and passion to die for. Here we are bringing artificial intelligence in one of the largest agriculture university, Punjab Agriculture University. Here's a tractor parked here. It's an artificial intelligent tractor. It can go in any of the muddy waters. It is equipped with the um, you know, machine vision. It can foresee in the crop which actual crop or which actual plant is infected and accordingly it will sprinkle the pesticides. It won't give the pesticide to the entire crop, only to the infested particular plant or a crop. And accordingly, it can see how much nutrients are there in the soil or where soil is lacking or which part of the palm is lacking. Accordingly, it can provide them with fertilizers. So we are going to have much more food and much better quality for food and organic food. We need food. So when we talk about AI or anything we talk about in life, it has an, its own impact cycle. So what is the impact cycle of AI? We need to identify the decision, what we want out of it, what, what do we want the technology to do? And we have to master the data because there is tons and tons and tons of data all around. We need to master it. We need to provide it particular data and we have to provide the mean to the data that we want, what we want out of it. We have to provide the actionable recommendations that yes, we want this particular engine to deliver us this result. And then they have to communicate the insights and track the outcomes. So that if there are any deviations, those deviations could be you know, cured. And if we are getting the desired results, then again, the same process would be repeated. These machines would learn from their own environment to better out themselves autonomously. So we've been talking how to produce AI, then that's when Artificial intelligence, when we are creating it to solve intelligence, to solve everything all around. And when these machines, they learn from the, their own environment with the trained data. And you know what is happening here? We always need a human being in the loop. Yes. To make these things happen, to create the technologies and to develop more and more. We always need a human being in the loop. So humans are not going anywhere. Keep that in mind, because uh, I get come across this question a lot many times that technology might even surpass humans and it might replace humans. Human beings are irreplaceable; they will never be replaced. So this is how AI and robotics is in every sphere. Now, this is another interesting video you're going to see on your screens. We all are sitting at our respective homes due to the pandemic. Mr. Parminder said he's sitting in US and I believe same is with the Mr. Ravish Tewan. I'm sitting here in India. You guys have joined from various parts of uh, the world. And it, it would have been possible that, um, like I, I, I know if there wouldn't have been pandemic, PCC would have wanted this in the real world. How about if I say that there is a possibility that we can teleport all of you to one place with the technology. Yes, you heard it right. Till now you would have heard this word teleport in Hollywood movies, but now with the technology, it's possible that you keep sitting at your homes, keep sipping your coffee, but at the same time, a holographic clone of yours could be projected in any part of the world. And imagine you are only capable of speaking Hindi or maybe other few languages. You don't know Japanese. How about if you have to go for a conference in Japan and you don't know how to speak Japanese and due to the pandemic, you can't even travel. I would say, keep sitting at your home, 
we can project your holographic clone in Japan and your clone would be speaking Japanese. Isn't that interesting? And in the same time, imagine you could be projected in UK speaking English. You, you can be projected in Dubai speaking Arabic. So you could be in multiple parts of the world at the same time speaking different languages. So our, your holographic clone would be way too smarter than you. And this is just possible, just wearing these glasses. You can see this wonderful woman. She's from Microsoft. She's wearing these glasses. And you're going to see she's going to project a holographic clone. Yes, that is the holographic clone you are able to see on her hand. And if I would say soon mobile phones would be obsolete, we won't be using them anymore. So whenever we are going to place a call to each other, we would be virtually sitting right next to each other. So it is that next time Mr. Parminda said he's calling me up. I won't be talking on a mobile phone. I would be sitting right opposite to him on the next chair. Isn't that surprising? That is how you're seeing right now. Look at your screens. Stay glued to your screens and see how wonderful it is happening. You're seeing a life-size uh, clone, a holographic clone happening. Yes. Now, can you see two identical women? The second one is a holographic clone of hers. And this clone can be projected in any part of the world. This clone is speaking Japanese right now. That is the technology and it, this technology exists. Again, as Mr. Ravish was saying that we all are using technologies. We don't even know whether it exists or not. This technology exists for real. So we have come up long way in our evolution. Steam engines came in, steam happened and mechanized production started. Industrial revolution first one happened. Then what happened? Electricity came in. Wow, mass production with the Industrial Revolution 2. Then came in Industrial Revolution 3. And sorry. And then the information exchange, electronics, IT happened. That was that was termed as big, big, big thing. But now what is happening? We are in Industrial Revolution 4. Automation, data exchange, big data, IoT, AI, ML. That is the beauty of it. We humans, we are naturally intelligent. We have our brains. Can you believe the machine having a brain? Yes, they have their own neural networks, neural engines. They are capable of doing each and everything the way we do. Few years, still few years ago, they said that technology do everything, but it can't mimic human brain. But now technology has gone to that level that it can mimic our emotions, it can mimic our human brains. And then when it's equipped with robotics, ML, deep learning, or it can do anything possible. Why are we talking all about it? Why are we talking about technologies? You know why? To solve the problems around it. We face so many problems. So the solution is with the technology. And you know what? Another beautiful thing about it, I come across people, especially the youth, they say that they are very passionate about life. They are very passionate about working but they don't have the idea. What our general notion is when we come across a problem? Ah, why someone doesn't do something about this problem? Why someone doesn't solve it? So I ask you, why don't you solve it? Any problem that you face is a next unicorn idea. It's a next data con idea. Work on it. And there you go. And what is cybernetics actually? The way we humans communicate, these machines, they communicate, they have their own cybernetics network whereby they communicate what exactly they're doing, what are the outcomes, what are the deviations there, how they can take the corrective measures. Altogether, this is the entire universe of artificial intelligence. AI is everywhere, everywhere, but I'm going to talk about the most frequent use cases, image analysis. Right now I'm in this session with you, I might be clicking your pictures, and what if I share it on Facebook? You are going to get a notification. Dr. Munish Jindal has shared your picture on the Facebook. Now, how does Facebook knows that I have uploaded your picture? If ever you have uploaded your picture anywhere on internet, Facebook has run its own uh, AI algorithms behind that. Whenever a new picture gets uploaded on Facebook, Facebook runs its own algorithms behind that. When that algorithm matches with the algorithm of a picture, they send you a notification that your picture has been uploaded. Isn't that interesting? That is why we need to be more protective about our privacy in the cyber world. Virtual assistant. Right now I'm delivering this talk to you, but you can go to my website, www.hoverrobotics.com. And you can talk to me there as well. How's that possible? When I'm taking this session right here, how can you talk to me there? We have a virtual assistant called TDO over there. 
you can talk to the TTO and you would feel you're talking to me. What it is letting me do, it is making my business grow and it is making me available at the multiple places. Predictive analysis. Predictive analysis is something that can predict human behavior even before that particular human knows himself. We browse internet, we browse websites. I don't know how many of you have noticed. A notification comes in. Hi guys, this website is using a cookie. Can we accept it for the better user experience? Believe me, even if you you going to reject that, your experience remains the same. But what that cookie does is, it is tracking your behavior, what exactly you're browsing, your keystrokes, what exactly you're typing, your eyeballs, what exactly you're looking at, where you're spending your time upon. Imagine if you want to buy a shirt. A shirt comes in yellow color. You're not spending much of a time. A shirt comes in black color, you closed it. Then a shirt comes in a blue color and you started browsing. Then there's a price range that came in a $50. We are not much interested. A shirt came in $1,000. You just closed it and then a shirt, they're coming in the range of $100 to $300 and you are browsing it. And you know now, even before you have made up your mind, machine knows that you're going to buy a blue shirt in the range of $100 to $300. And imagine another interesting factor here, you're walking down to a mall, the cameras on the rooftop, they recognized you. Hi, Mr. Parminder Sethi, and now you're surprised. How, 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 do, how does they know? Cause you have your picture somewhere on the internet and they recognized you. They welcomed you and as soon as you walked in, they already know that you're here to buy a blue shirt in this particular price range. And it is already happening in one of the malls in the US. And this is the beauty that how in future, they're gonna know everything about us. And if you would have noticed that if you browse about a particular uh, product, or a service, and then you are browsing another website, but you start seeing the advertisement of those products. That is how they are interlinking the data and the user behavior. Machine learning, I already told you, when machines they're fed with the data, they learn and they better out themselves. Natural language processing again, Alexa, Google Home, self-driving technologies. I'm going to showcase it to you. These are uh, the cards, the normal cards that we use for our day-to-day -day commute, and but they are capable of driving themselves. I was in Hong Kong in 2016. I got to experience that. I was standing, a car came in, the rear door popped open. I sat in the rear seat. The car picked up the location, my destination location from my mobile phone through Bluetooth, and it dropped me there through the optimal route. As you can see in the car, everyone is sitting in the rear seat. No one is on the driver's seat and the car is roaming around. The car, this self-driving car, knows the speed limit, it knows the next red light camera, it knows the zebra crossing, it knows how many cars, trucks, buses are moving around, and it knows the optimal route. So these are much safer, much better option to drive, and this is how technology is going to surpass human standards. And days not far away when we are going to drive them. Tesla has developed them. I don't know how the government regulations in US, whether they allow um, these autonomous cars to run on the roads. AI is in medicine as well. It's recently, um, I read this news of US itself that there was a biker who was biking in the secluded mountains of US. He was wearing an Apple watch and he fainted. When his um, heartbeat started to slow down, the Apple watch sent SOS to 911. And this guy was airlifted and his life got saved. Imagine just a watch you're wearing on your wrist saving your life. That is how technology is happening. And here on your screens, you're seeing the X-rays of the pneumonia patients. The top six radiologists in the world, they were gathered together at one place. They were shown these X-rays of the pneumonia patients. And the same X-rays were fed to an AI engine as well. And guess what happened? The radiologists were asked to deliver their outcomes to, you know, judge what exactly they're able to see, but the AI engine, its accuracy surpassed the human judgment. So these uh, radiologists said that the day is not far away when all the diagnosis or even the human cure would be done through these AI machines. These are the few top AI use cases, customer experience, as I already told you, you can go to our website, you can experience it. Supply chain, these days when you order a product, right from packing, dispatching, in transit to getting it delivered, we keep getting a notification. 
that is again through ai engines human resource ah oh, this is wonderful earlier when um, an interview used to happen the in- people there are there real people who used to interview us ask us our educational background what we are looking for and where we foresee our future but now the larger organizations they are putting them in ai environment so that they can rightly get to know what kind of human being he or she is where he would be the perfect fit in the organization and whether he is going to be an asset or a liability to the organization fraud detection banking financial sector is using or fintechs are using it if someone is applying for a loan whether they are going to repay it or not or whether they have the capabilities so they are using ai for that knowledge creation r and d is happening big time we are doing it at hover robotics pcc is already doing it through now their talk series using their technologies across the globe predictive analysis already told you how they are getting to know about your user behavior through your browsing histories real time operations management we are doing it on our website customer service we are serving our customers through ai virtual assistants the risk management and analytics customer insights pricing and promotion this is very interesting imagine you walk down to a mall you want to buy an office chair you like the office chair but then when you saw the pricing oh, you found it on a higher side you know what has just happened the camera on your head noticed your body language that you like the chair but you're finding the pricing on a higher side yes you remember when i told you that they can even get to know your personality traits through your selfies that is in your body language speaks as soon as you looked at the price tag when you found it on a higher side cameras the ai engines they could to know and now what has happened they have recognized you that you were so and so cause you have your picture on the internet and you might have uploaded your number in your facebook or somewhere else on the internet now they have your number as well so now what has happened they recognized you they saw you are finding the price on the higher side they have immediately sent you a text that if you buy it right now you will get extra 50 dollars off wow and same place i walked in i like the chair i'm not bothered about the price i picked it scanned it and came out so now it could be possible that 10 different people buy same product from the same place but at 10 different prices in the near future you won't be seeing a standardized you know sale 40% no it would be a different pricing a differentiated pricing for everyone that is how the pricing information is going to be used now you are seeing mindsphere that is developed by siemens in the manufacturing domain be it aerospace wind turbines to railways shipping yards fasteners clothing shoes watch you should talk about any industry they are using my they, uh, they are inculcating mindsphere in the manufacturing line so that they can have the quantitative as well as qualitative analysis of the same and they can deliver us the desired quality and much better numbers in terms of quality now you might be wondering what about the existing manufacturing units that are in existence from decades or from centuries the best part about mindsphere is it's backward compatible backward compatible is when something is already existence technology can go back into it and equip itself called siemens have developed tiny sensors that can be implanted into the already existing manufacturing lines in the assembly lines and the entire manufacturing process can be monitored so this is how technology is taking over into the existing world as well that is how the fourth revolution is catering us internet of things cloud computing cloud servers cyber security robotics augmented reality virtual reality quantum mechanics cryptos nanotechnology biotechnology it's all about and this revolution for artificial intelligence and support sports as well big time imagine you want to play a certain sport maybe badminton or golf and you don't know a camera with an app placed on a badminton court tracking your body reflexes how high you jump how you held the racket in your hand how you twisted your wrist what are the areas your opponent is strong in and it is letting you know where you need to work upon what areas how to hold the racket how you need to twist your wrist i love playing golf i'm playing here in india i know my golf course i know how the fairway is turning i know the length of the grass lay i know what kind of wind is blowing but tomorrow if you invite me to us i don't know anything about the golf course over there the what is the length of the grass lay as when you play golf the length of the grass lay also matters so there are apps that can let me know that what kind of golf course it is 
what is the length of the grass blade over there, what kind of wind is blowing, what kind of weather it is, how this golf course is taking a turn, in which direction, and I can power my hole. That is the beauty of AI. What exactly you're seeing on your screens? Let me see how many of you are awake. If you can quickly answer, regardless of the title, if you can quickly answer me in the chat what exactly you are seeing on the screen. Maybe, I don't know, maybe people. Uh, yes, it's a medicine, glad. Thank you, Chuck Pritchi, for answering that. So these are ordinary pills. When we fall sick, we need to take medicine. Maybe uh, we get a fever, we go to the doctor. They say, okay, take a medicine three times a day for three days. We get sore throat, we get cough and cold. They uh, prescribe us antibiotics for seven days, three times a day, or maybe senior citizens, old age parents who have diabetic, low BP, high BP, and they have to take medicines every day. Certain times they forget. Imagine a robotic pill going inside your body, delivering you the required dose of medicine through sugar needles, sugar dissolved in your skin. No need to take any kind of injections. Yes. This is the best news for people who are scared of injections. No injections would vanish with this. And the best part about this pill is it can stay in your body for a day, for a week, for a year, for a month, as long as it's desired. Imagine you pay someone's parents or senior citizens who has a low BP or high BP or diabetes, one pill inside delivering timely doses, they never ever have to remember medicine again. And now comes another wonderful part Till now, we are taking curative measures. We fall sick, we go to doctor, we take medicine. Now the medicine is going to such advanced stage that we are going to have preventive measures. They're going to, the AI through our body reflexes going to let us know before time that in the future we might fall sick, we might face this ailment and we would be taking this uh, medicine even before time, we will never fall sick. Our mortality rate is going to increase. That is the beauty of this robotic pill, and that is how AI is helping in medicine. Now, this is my favorite, e-mobility. Yes, this is what we did in India. This is what we brought. Commuting from one place to another. Stand on it, think to move. Yes, think to move. This moves with your thinking. Why, how our entire body moves with our brain, right? So when we stand on it, we think to move, there is a body reflex that gets generated in our body. This can sense 200 body reflexes per second. 200 body reflexes per second. So this moves with your thinking. So, and it's electrically chargeable. You don't need any petrol, diesel, gas, nothing. Charge it, go from one place to another. No pollution. This is the future of commuting. We are already doing this since 2015. It's been six years. And this is going to change the global scenario. It's already happening big time in US. Um, the police, is, uh, the cops are patrolling on it. And now we are bringing it into railways here. We are trying to bring it to the bigger malls with the bigger shopping centers, airports, much more. This has been recently been used in many movies for recreational activities as well, for songs and much more can be done. This is the next gen, next version I'm showcasing you. We all, uh, whenever we go somewhere, we all love to get, get our pictures clicked. But we have to ask someone, hey, can you click my picture? Now this can act as your sidekick. It, it knows that uh, you are the boss and it can click your pictures. And it has two modes, candid, whereby you're just talking, shaking hands, laughing, smiling, it will keep on clicking your picture or the portrait mode, whereby it will scan your face and then it will click your portrait pictures. Much more, it, you can maneuver it through your mobile phone as well on a mobile app. And it can, ima it's, uh, imagine you're sitting in a conference, in a business conference, and you want your business card to be given to each and everyone over there. You don't have to get up. You just maneuver it through on your mobile phone and it will distribute your business cards to everyone. This is uh, Kiva uh, in Amazon warehouse. So this is the best example of how human beings are working hand in hand with robots, hand in hand with technology. That is when I told you that um, human beings are happy working with the technology. Here, that is what you're gonna see, that how happier these guys are. You can see this wonderful gentleman smiling. He's working in Amazon warehouse. Why he's so happy, you know why? Because earlier he had to lift load. 
100 kg, 60 kg by himself. Now he's comfortably sitting in his chair, pressing the buttons on his touch screen. These Kiva robots are capable of lifting 320 kg of a load and they can remember 10 million items. They're equipped with the uh, machine vision. They can see other humans roaming around. They can see other aisles moving around. They can see other Kiva robots moving around. The 20,000 Kivas deployed there. So these hum humans, they are just touching the buttons and the entire aisle comes to them with the Kiva. They take out the inventory. The Kiva even takes the note of what you have taken out, how much was there, how much you have taken out, and how much has remained in the aisle, and how much more it needs to order. This is the best use case of humans with the robots. All you need to do is prioritize yourself so that either you can make these wonderful robots or you are able to operate these robots. AI and farming. Now, I have been talking all about technology, but I'm suddenly talking about AI and the farming. We are 8 billion people on Earth. Soon we are going to be 10 billion people. The population is going to increase by 25%. But do you know, know how much food we need? We need another extra 60% food for that. Food is already scarce. So AI is coming, big famine farming. It can, um, uh, the soil sensors can let us know the kind of nutrients already in the soil, the moisture in the soil. The rain sensors can let us know how much rain it's going to happen, what kind of weather it's gonna be, how much. So we can do much more crop with less water. So now AI has gone to such standards that it can let us know even before sowing how much crop we are going to have. It can even let us know which crop we shall sow that we get the maximum yield. Organic food without pesticides, without fertilizers. This is the future of farming. And now on your screens, you're going to see a very wonderful video. I, I really want all of you to be participative and let me know what exactly you're seeing on the screen. This is a tomato harvester. Can you let me know, and it is equipped with, it's equipped with machine vision. Can you let me know what exactly it's doing? See clearly, it's a wonderful tomato harvester and working one of the countries and see how, what exactly it's doing. Let me see. Yes, Jagpreet Ji, thank you. It's detecting the ripened plant. Very true. So there are four colored tomatoes on the screen, green, yellow, orange, and red. And you know what it is doing? It is only uh, harvesting the red ones, the ripened ones. Rest of them, it is letting them grow. And another beautiful thing, if you can notice minutely, there are a few of the birds that uh, buds of tomato that haven't even grown. It is letting them grow. So this way, we are going to have more food, much better quality of food. That is how technology is changing the scenario. This is a RoboDog. This video is around three to four months old. This is designed by Boston Dynamics. It's been deployed in one of the busiest parts of Singapore where people come to sit, chit chat, spend time with each other. This robot dog is enforcing social distancing. It is asking them to stay away from each other, wear mask, use sanitizer. And it has the power of the, it has the authority of a cop. It is again equipped with machine vision and image recognition. It can recognize you who you are, right? So, and if you're not following the social distancing, it is going to issue you a, a ticket on the spot. Imagine technology surpassing humans. And why do we need it? It is solar chargeable, doesn't need a break, doesn't need a food, and it can work around the clock. In the pandemic, the best use case. So till now I've been talking about technologies, machines, or humans. Hey, right now on your screen, you're seeing Sophia. She talks like us, she walks like us. Last year I got a chance in February to come across her in Indian School of Business, but you know, she's a robot. And that is why terminology humanoid. She can even mimic our gestures, our emotions. And if you try to overpower her, she will do the sarcastic remarks. So she's the official uh, citizen of UAE and she can talk any language. She has answers to everything. She recently participated in one of the fashion shows as well. And now she has plans to go for Hollywood movies. So soon it could be possible that we are walking down in a mall or in a shop, park. There are a fellow person, fellow citizen walking with us, but we don't know whether it's a human or a humanoid. So that's all about technologies that we have talked till now. That is I was just wanted to give you a glimpse. I didn't want it to be a very technical session as Parminder Ji told me, it's the first session of the talk series. So I just wanted to give you the glimpse, how technology is everywhere, how happily we are using it and how this is coming so beautifully in our life and how this is changing the scenario and every day we are using it with knowingly or unknowingly. And if we deploy technology ethically, successfully, rightfully, this is a boon to us. And now I leave the session open for question answers. If you have any of you have your questions, you can write it down in the chat. I would be much more happy to answer it. And here is my personal information. If you think I could be of any use to you, I'm available 24 x 7, 
through being the proud part of Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. Here is my personal information. Feel free to connect me, or you can connect to me through Praminder Sethi Ji as well as Ravish Diman Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jindal. Uh, it woke me up. Really, really exciting uh, presentation. Um, I think this is, uh, as uh, Ravish and I have been mulling over for the last several months, I mean, we, we in our careers have never done the same thing for over maybe a couple of years. And every couple of years, um, technologies change. And, and um, you know, although mostly on the corporate side now, AI and other stuff that we will be presenting and bringing you along and others with us. Uh, it seems like an exciting time. Um, thank you for that awesome presentation. Um, I got comments like people's kids are watching and even they are hooked on to it. So, so really, really well. Um, we do have a few minutes left and I think we have some interesting questions. I'm not sure if we can address all of them, but, uh, but I will try to um, sort of uh, synthesize some of the questions and see if we could um, get some um, perspectives from your perspective, uh, from your point of view, because you travel around the world and you do this for a living. Um, one of the questions that's very, very interesting, and you, you, we couldn't avoid it, um, is you talked about Sophia, and you talked about, um, you know, they've been granting citizenship and, and all that. I think there are two or three questions around that. I'll synthesize it. And Ravish, you, uh, please, we can have a little bit of a discussion. But from your point of view, Dr. Jindal, um, uh, the impacts uh, from privacy and from um, you know, human uh, aspects of robots now doing things that humans did, and, and what if they misbehaved? And what if you know, can Saudi Arabia persecute uh, a robot, you know, just like they could persecute uh, a, a human being or whatever. So there are questions about humans' privacy and 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 impacts on humanity as this thing, uh, you know, becomes a true reality. What what's your what's your um, opinion on all of that? Yes. See, uh, if you would have noticed when I started the session in the very beginning. Uh, I mentioned this and throughout the session I mentioned that when we have technology in hand, when we have such something such powerful, we need to deploy it successfully, ethically and knowledgeably. And I have been kept on stressing on the part ethically. Imagine we do have nuclear weapons in the world, right? But we all know the consequences. So same is with the technology. And when we are in the cyber world, it's up to us whether we want to be in the domain of cybersecurity or we want to be the hackers. So it is again, whether you want to be a cop or whether you want to be a terrorist, right? So these robots, yes, these are man-made. I will always keep on stressing this part that they can never take on human race. We are we, we, we smart and we are the fathers of these technologies. We have created them. Yes, these technologies can go into autonomous mode. We have to take care. There are two of the codes of Facebook that went into auto writing, autonomous mode, and Facebook had to shut them. So when you ask me that these robots, yes, if we give them that kind of powers, they can go beyond into the uh, kind of the work we have assigned them. And then when you are talking about prosecuting them, obviously we can shut them out. Machine, imagine if your laptop, uh, you're using it, if it's not working or you suddenly see it has hanged or it is suddenly the cursor is moving automatically, what you do? You just shut it down and then you restart it. And when you restart it, if it's working fine, you start using it or you send it to the call laptop doctor, the repair person who can fix it. So same is true for these robots, these technologies. There is a fix for everything, but if we make sure that we deploy them rightfully, willfully, knowledgeably, they can't go wrong and they won't go wrong. Thank you. I, I think that's very well said. Um, you know, they, if, if they misbehave, we can shut them down and fix it. I think the I think the the being ethical and having integrity as part of the designers of the system, it is going to be human, um, you know, responsibility anyway. And if they misbehave, we we take care of them. Um, one of the other things that was very interesting um, is I'm not sure if you uh, are aware or have an opinion on universal basic income. If 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 robots start doing um, um, humans, you know, job. What does it do, do to the whole income equality and, and all that? Any opinion or thought on that? 
yeah, how about if I ask you, no offense to you, I ask you, Praminda Ji, today uh, you have to lift 200 kgs every day, round the clock. And it, or other way, I ask you, Praminda Ji, keep sitting on the chair, just press few buttons and things will get done. And you know, if you really ask me today, my back's hurting, so I would say, I would feel <laughs> <laughs> But, but you are right, though. I, I, I hear, but I want to hear your perspective on the income equality of it, not necessarily yeah, the work. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 is, that is what I'm coming up to. That we humans, if throughout the session, I kept on stressing this as well, that we need to prioritize our development. We need to learn. When I say learn, people certain times take it towards the coding. No, I'm not stressing at coding. You know why? Because these languages are there getting obsolete pretty quickly. It could be possible, whatever you're learning now, by the time you finish it, it's gone, kaboom. You know, done with it. So what I'm trying to say is, imagine today you are capable of, uh, I am capable of lifting a load, but I might not be capable of making a robot that can lift it. So I want to prioritize my development that I can lift it. The way I started this e-mobility era in India, that why not to commute, make people commute from, um, you know, uh, uh, cars to an uh, e-era. -E electric era. So what I changed the scenario here is changing the entire holistic sustainable living, providing them along with I'm making much better living rather than what I would have been making by selling a car. I'm making much better living by selling these robots. Now I'm talking from the entrepreneurial mind. So it's, if you will keep on developing, you will always have early movers uh, advantage. One, if you, if you think you don't have that innovative supreme, at least uh, learn to operate those robots. Like I showed you the example of Amazon warehouse, those humans, now they are paid the same. They are getting the same pay as much as they would have gone for lifting those weights rather than sitting in their chairs and pressing those buttons. All they've learned is how to operate the keyboard. So income, they, uh, there won't be any income parity. There won't be any reduction in jobs. Rather more opportunities will come. All it depends on us, how we take it, how we accept it. Thank you so much. I think we have about a minute left. So I wanted to thank Ravish, my brother in crime, in everything that we do. And thank you, uh, Jindal, Dr. Jindal. It's really, really been an impressive session. We really enjoyed it. Looks like with the kind of questions that are coming up, we may even just do a focus session on AI in medicine or AI in farming or whatever. So thank you so much. Um, um, I just wanted to give a word of thanks from PCC to everybody who joined. Um, I wanted to thank Ravish and, and Dr. Jindal and others who will be calling upon uh, in future sessions. PCC is a grassroots movement, as, as I stated earlier on when we started. We need um, leadership and involvement from all aspects of our communities. Uh, we really just feel like that the, the, the community um, can succeed um, only if the individuals take leadership roles and start getting involved. We, we welcome you all to register and sign in on to the, the Punjabi Chamber of Commerce and join a local group. And hopefully you can um, um, help us all and, and grow our community and enrich in our lives. So thank you very much. Thanks all. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Parminder Ji. Thank you so much, Ravish Divanji, for uh, like being like an elder brothers to me and as well as for being so thoughtful and considerate enough to make me part of PCC as well as uh, it always feels, you know, I don't know why, I always feel privileged when I start something new. As the first session, there are certain times speaker I come across, they're like, oh, it's your first session. I, I will take frequent session, uh, maybe subsequent session, maybe it's a tenth session or two. But I always love to start something new. So I'm glad that um, together with you, as I proudly say that I'm the pioneer of e-mobility in India, that we started this uh, talk series. And thank you. Thank you for inviting and making part of it. With a heartfelt gratitude to both of you and to the entire team of PCC. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you, Ravish. See you all later, very, very soon.